Nothingness is central to understanding Sartre's existentialism. Sartre defines nothingness as a place between one's consciousness and the objects they are conscious of. He then goes on to add other existentialist jargon. For some, and by some I mean me, this can be confusing. So think of it this way. When a ballet dancer starts their career, they dream of moving through the ranks, all the way from the corps de ballet to soloist to principal. The gaps between the core and the soloists and principles can be looked at in terms of the gaps between the consciousness and conscious objects. So I believe that each person had the ability to fill these gaps in whichever way they saw fit. Most dancers starting out in the industry are motivated because they can imagine themselves dancing all the featured roles in the future. And what do you know, Sartre also believed that the filling of these gaps should be done with an imagined future in mind. The filling of nothingness is what brings someone into an authentic existence. So what exactly does Sartre mean by an authentic existence? According to Sartre, living authentically involves taking full responsibility for our lives, choices, and actions. To put this into the context of ballet, let's use the example of an established principal dancer. That dancer knows that she has earned her place in the company. The only issue now are the up and coming dancers. Chances are these dancers have had better training, have better grand jetés, and higher arabesques. This dancer now feels as though she must work twice as hard to stay relevant. In her effort to stay relevant, she ends up with a career-ending injury. Her thoughts go from, I should work harder, to, that was a mistake. Although she's upset that she can no longer dance professionally, she acknowledges that the injury likely would not have happened had she not pushed herself so hard. She takes responsibility for her actions and the consequences that came from them, which would mean she's living an authentic existence according to Sartre. Finally, the all-important mauvaise foi, or bad faith. In Sartre's words, bad faith is when someone decides not to make a choice simply because of the potential consequences. Sartre states that when someone lives in bad faith, they're at the mercy of the circumstances they find themselves in. The concept of bad faith best relates to the unfortunate circumstance of an unhappy ballet student. Imagine a young girl whose mother insisted upon her taking ballet lessons. At first, the girl loves it. In fact, she loves it so much that she begs her parents to allow her to attend the prestigious School of American Ballet in New York City. Her parents agree, and six months later, the girl is studying with some of the most talented young dancers in the nation. As the years go on, she begins to hate everything about ballet. She hates the blisters on her feet, the eight-hour days of dancing, and that aching in her muscles that just won't go away. She realizes that there are so many more things she's passionate about. Things like literature, visual art, science, history. She sees that there are so many more things than ballet, yet she can't bring herself to tell her mom. Especially not after her family had to pay the $20,000 tuition every year. In the end, she keeps her mouth shut and pretends to love ballet. She's living in bad faith because she continues to pretend she's something she's not to avoid any consequences.